guys and welcome to another video sorry for being insanely lazy and not posting another and not posting video in over a month now but today i want to show you guys my m17a2 mask with the m6a2 chemical hood all right so the last video i did on this one was just as i got it and just t taking a very basic look at it today i'll be showing you the mask, the carrier, and all the and some accessories like the waterproofing bag, manual, and M8 chemical detection paper, which curiously enough just went out of date last year. Although you can still find in date examples, the newest one I found being 2027 expiration date. All right, so some basic information on the mask. You can see here it's 1984 MSA and I'm not sure I think this is like the week or month it was made in but I'm not sure how to identify it it is a size small if I can there we go same the valve cover here I can roll it down enough 1984 MSA And it has the uh, normal M6A2 with the leather drawstring cord, or leather drawstring piece that pulls the cord back. Now this configuration for the chemical hood, with the hood pulled over the exhale valve would be, if it's below a certain temperature, I think it's in Celsius, like 33 degrees Celsius or something. But if it's really cold outside, to prevent frost from accumulating in the hood, you'd pull it down like that. So you could exhale normally. This mask, well, specifically the A2 model, was famously seen in Operation Desert Storm. Whether it was news clippings, TV show, or in news clippings, or books like this, it was seen. As you can see, as the same configuration. Now. This mask was probably was notably used in Vietnam for the ABC M17 and for this model, Operation Desert Storm. The first accessory we have here is the waterproofing bag, which this is the M1 waterproofing bag. It's in a Ziploc bag here. I have two examples of it, but this one is the one that came in the carrier here. So what you would do is you would take the bag, well, it wouldn't be carried in a Ziploc bag, you would place the mask inside the bag, so you couldn't just keep leave it in there, because it would degrade the bag, and if you were crossing through a canal or a river, this, the mask wouldn't get wet, and the filters wouldn't get damaged and ruined, so that was the purpose of the waterproofing bag. Now, this, I presume, is the M15A1 character, carrier, I mean, not character, carrier i think duck canvas although that might have just been the earlier ones so if you know more about this uh please comment and i don't have some of the stuff that would that you would normally find with it like the m258 decontamination kit although i can buy that for about six dollars here we have the m8 chemical detection paper so you would take one piece out of this booklet here, and you would rub it against the surface that uh, had liquid droplets on it to see if they're in fact chemical agents. And here's the manual. It covers the ABC M17, M17A1, and M17A2. Throughout the basic care of it, how to use it, and what not to do with it. Now, this example here, it uses the M13A2 filters. You can see right here because of the green ring. And the filters are held in place by these, um, by these caps, that, by the inlet valve covers that go over here. You just push them in, and then they're on. Also, the eyepieces, which are here, these ones are slightly yellowed. Although the last ones I had were covered in sand and yellowed. 
So what would, what you do is you flip the rubber coating around in here. Don't leave it like this because it will ruin the eyepiece. And then you just flip the coating around. Then it's on. So let's take a look inside of the M17 face piece. The prototype designation for the M17A2 is the E13R12. The M17A1 A1 being the E13R13. Looking inside here, we can see the drinking tube, which is the M1 drinking device, or the M1 NBC drink cap. This one has a size medium nose cup, made of a butyl and natural rubber mix, as well as the face piece. Here, the filter pockets are kept shut by a series of buttons, and the oral nasal cup is pinned open. Here is the exhale valve down there. And to move the drinking tube, you would take this lever and twist it, which would place the drink tube in your mouth and you could drink. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is not to spill water in the mask because that would saturate your filters. And here is the C8R1 head harness. As you notice, unlike the M40 and MCU2, it's lacking a quick don tab because they wouldn't normally quick don it. Now the elastic in this in this uh, head harness is coming apart sadly, so I might have to order a new one. Here's the markings on the side of it. And I'm just gonna get a canteen out real quick to demonstrate how you would use the drinking device. You would take your canteen, remove the cap cover, take the drinking tube out of its little slot here, Place it inside of the cap. Hold it upwards so the water so the water um flows to the tube. Push the drink tube into your mouth and blow into the canteen to create a steady flow of water, which you can stop by sucking in on it. Then you would undo then you would remove the drink tube from your mouth, wait till the water drains out of the tube. Place the tube back into its slot. Well, first you would close your canteen lid here. Well, not the lid, the cover on it. And you would place this back in its slot to prevent further contamination, if you haven't already. So, another feature of the M17 Well, I already mentioned this was the size to nose cups. The M9 did not have this, and any and any other U.S. mask predating this did not. While this is a size small face blank, this is a size medium nose cup. The mask itself is made out of a mix of butyl and natural rubber. But over time, these can accumulate a white waxy substance known as bloom which you can wash off easily, although you'd have to take out the filters and anything else on it. Next is the M6A2 chemical hood, or the CBR hood, or just the hood that's known to some people. I believe this was made of a rubberized canvas, but I'm probably wrong on that. If you do know, please explain it to me in the comments. So this would prevent um, liquid or just general contamination to your neck and back of the head area. And it could protect you from biting insects, as it says in the manual. Alright, I'm going to don this mask and show you how to properly put on the hood. So as soon as you got the head harness done properly, you pull the hood back. Pull the straw string down. Zip it up. And then make sure the drawstring is below the valve assembly. Pull on this and then adjust it. And then you adjust these two these two Velcro arm strings here, or whatever you call them. All right, so I'm gonna tell you some more of my thoughts I on this think mask. The M17 series was a great series of masks that brought a lot of new design features to the table, like sized nose cups. 
and dual filters for the most part on US masks were unseen up until this point. Well, technically dual filters because it has a series of two internal cheek filters here. And overall, I really like the M17A2 and well, the M17A2 is my favorite, but I think all of the M17 series is good. And for that, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe for more, and goodbye.